الله تعالى وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين سرق الله عليم ربش أحلي صدري ويسر أمري وحل العقرة من لساني يفقه قولي Respected brothers, sisters, respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala barakatuh Al-Afu minkum Normally when you, make, when you make wudu, you make it with water When you don't have wudu, you make tayammum And so the same analogy, uh, another uh, brother of ours made before I will do it again So there's no proper scholar to give a khutbah today So uh, uh, I ask your pardon, you're stuck with me today So alhamdulillah <laughs> And I want to talk about how we should celebrate the Messenger of God, that He is a blessing from Allah. And that Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah Yunus, I believe, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ You know, many people now, you know, many, many people they celebrate when the football team wins, and when the soccer team wins, they jump up and down, they're throwing everything in the air, they're so happy, you know, but which one of us is celebrating after we pray Fajr Salah on time? If one of us, we wake up for Qiyam layl which one of us is happy? Oh Allah, thank you. We throw our fists in the air out of excitement and, and happiness that Alhamdulillah, I woke up for Qiyam layl You know, which one of us is so excited to come to the Masjid for Salatul Fajr, Salatul Isha, or we, 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 we reach a new record of Salah al Nabi, maybe 500 in a day, 600 in a day. Or are we, are we not thinking like that? We're just stuck in the worldly affairs, stuck in the rat race. Where, where are we thinking? Where are our hearts aligned? And so Allah tells us, reminds us, to kind of bring us back to calibrate us where we should be thinking. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Say, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ By the bounty and the grace of Allah and by His mercy, let them be happy with that. Let them be excited about that. Let them be so happy in that. That's better than everything they can accumulate. That's better than everything in the world. All this stuff in the world is temporal. It's going to pass. We're going to be in the grave. We're going to leave it all behind. You know, except for your family, your wealth. Your wealth you leave behind. Your family you leave behind. All that's with you in the grave is your actions. Your actions and your knowledge. So your actions will be as a form of a person. If they were good, it will be a beautiful person. Good company, you'll be relaxed, you'll be chilling with your friend. But if your actions were bad overall, then you'll be chilling with somebody who you're not, you're not really chilling with. Then so obviously there's two extremes, but there's in between. And so Ibn Abbas, in, 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 in explaining this hadith, said the fadl of Allah, the grace of Allah is knowledge. <coughs> and the rahmah of Allah is nothing other than the messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because think about it. Had it not been for the Messenger of Allah وسلم, we would have no idea how to connect with Allah. We would have no idea how to live our lives. You know, let's be real. I mean, I'll be honest. I mean, who knows? Many of us, we would be going down south the wrong actions. We would be doing drugs, alcohol, just doing whatever. Who thinking about God? Who's thinking about this? Who's think Our lives would be completely different. You know, everything blessing in our lives you can attribute it to the Messenger of Allah وسلم. Everything we know is because of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how to pray, how to connect with Allah. Alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al-Islam, wa kafa biha ni'mah. If we only knew what the blessing of Islam, we would realize that sufficient it is as a blessing. That Allah has given us Islam. And part of gratitude is that we recognize that we don't deserve anything. One of the, tr the, one of the meanings of gratitude is that you realize that we don't deserve it. So we think we are entitled to be a ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We think we're entitled to be a messenger, uh, following the messenger of God. No, it's a blessing of Allah. It's a blessing of Allah, and we need to be grateful to Allah that we are Muslims. We believe in Allah. We're on a straight path, and what are we doing? With it? That's the question. What do we do? How do we show our gratitude to Allah? We must show it with our actions and our speech and how we interact with others and in following the messenger of God. And as the saying, I'm not sure who it said it exactly, but Adibu uh, I think it was said, basically teach adab of your children with thalaf. Love of the messenger, love of my family, and recitation of Quran. Because when you love the messenger of Allah, when you love him as, he's, as he is supposed to be loved, meaning more than yourself. 
the, as the Prophet taught us, our Iman, our faith is deficient until we love Him more than ourselves. So, if we really loved Him the way He should be loved, our lives would be very different. Our lives would be different in a better sense. And that's, it, that's why we always need reminders as believers to follow, to, to follow the Messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and not follow our own desires. You know, oh, I read the Quran, I do my own thing. No, no. And how do you understand the Quran? You have to have a teacher. And this teacher has to have some kind of connection to a teacher and all the way back to none other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can't just pick up the Quran, you can't just pick up a, a medical school book and call yourself a doctor. It doesn't work like that. You can't just pick up an engineering book, read it, and then call yourself an engineer. It doesn't work like that. If it doesn't work like that in dunya, why do we uh, so lazy and slack and basical in terms of deen? We should be more, you know, uh, important on, on deen. In matters of religion, we should be more serious because we have to follow what school did you learn this from, which teacher, what, is, what authority do they have back to the Messenger of God, so Is it the majority opinion of the school? Is it a minority opinion? There's, there's a lot of, in terms of knowledge. There's a lot out there in Islam, and you can't just take, oh, I heard this one opinion, and I'm going to apply it to, you know, it gets dangerous when you're doing that, because then you're following your desires, you're not really following the Messenger of God, so on. <coughs> and Allah Ta'ala also says, you know, that the Messenger of God, so be thankful, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ بِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَالْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرُ مِنْ مَجْمَعُونَ That, say, in the, in the bounty of Allah and His mercy, let them be happy. That is better than what they accumulate. And also Allah says, We have not sent you, O Muhammad Wasallam, except as a mercy for everything. Alameen, basically everything other than Allah, everything that's created. And we know from hadith that he had mercy even on the animals. There were miracles. The, the camel would come running to the Prophet Wasallam and complaining that my owner is not taking care of me, etc., etc. And then the Prophet Wasallam would, would teach this person, look, you have to give the animal its rights. It has retribution on the Day of Judgment. So we have to be even merciful to even the animals. How can it be? We have to be merciful to even our neighbors. And whether Muslim or non-Muslim, we know the Shahadis. The Prophet Wasallam said, he was so scared that they would have an inheritance. Uh, the neighbors. That's how much emphasis Jibreel Alayhi gave him. There are many hadith that are teaching about the beauty and the mercy of the Prophet wasallam. Just a couple of stories. When a, a Jew, for example, lent some money to the Messenger of God wasallam, and the Prophet wasallam, and he, he, he had a set time, they're going to get the money back, let's say January 1st, for example. And, but, then, but then this man came back, give me my money back now. Like 10 days early, for example, was like, hey, you're not doing your money back yet. Not only that, he also grabbed the Prophet of white cloak and, and pulled him so hard and left a mark on his blessed neck. Still so he's completely making a, you know, what's he doing here? He's really messing around here in the wrong way. So, of course, Allah radiallahu anhu who came and ready to chop his head off. But the Prophet told him, hey, hold on, calm down. You know, this is not the way we treat people. And so he... He ordered Umar radiallahu anhu to also to give him his due, to give him the money that's due to him and give him extra because of the way Umar reacted. And so we as believers we learn many lessons from that. One of them is the lesson of tolerance to any to everybody, whether they're believers or non believers. Because you never know. You never know who Allah will give Hidayah. You never know. The the, the Muslims never thought that Umar would become Muslim. So never ever close the door. Who are you or, or I to close the door of Allah's guidance and hidayah and mercy? We can never determine that. Maybe on their dying deathbed, they will remember that you were nice to them. They will remember that and maybe they will take shahada. Always have that in your heart. Always have the, the, the eye. Look at all people with the eye of love. This was the way of the Muhammad Sallallahu He wanted to, everybody, he wanted to share the light, share the love. An example of the, of the, at the time of the Meccan period, when the Prophet ﷺ was doing his da'wah, he invited people to this. This is what it is, inviting people to Allah's mercy, inviting to the banquet. And, and the person who used to keep trash on the path of the Prophet ﷺ. And one day the trash wasn't there, and the Prophet ﷺ said, where's my gift? Where's my gift? And see how he would change, change, how he would change a negative thing into a positive thing and call it a gift. Not only this, he went and, and visited the, and inquired about this person and found out this person was sick. 
And so this person is actually is like, what's going on here? I'm causing harm to you. I'm throwing chat trash on your path, and you're coming to visit me. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Rasulullah. So I mean, this was his way. So I saw him. He would change hearts. How many times do you see? You hear story after story after story, where one day some person says, "There was nobody I hated more. Nobody I hated more in my in the entire world except Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam." And then all of a sudden, next day. There was nobody I loved more than Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I mean, this is not illa illa Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What did he say when he first came into Medina? When the people sang to him, "Qala al badu alina." What did what did he first thing he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Ayyuhan nas, ushul salam. I forget if it was wasul al arham or wat al taam. Wasalu bil layli wal nasul niyam tadkhulu al jannah bi salam. Oh, you people, uh, spread the peace. Spread the peace. Feed other people. So spread the peace, spread the love, feed people. That's how you gain people's hearts, right? When you feed them, join in ties together, pray at night time, you go to Jannah in peace. That was the first word out of his blessed mouth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the Jewish learned rabbis, I believe, Abdullah bin Salam, radiallahu anhu, heard that, and he was like, this is not, this is not the face, face of a liar. This is not the face of a liar. And of course, he took the hara. And so, story after story you hear, you know, of the situations like this. When the heart is in tune and it's truly seeking guidance from Allah and truly humble to the truth, Allah will guide you, inshallah. And, and that's who he was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have no idea his real maqam, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allah himself says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu salluna ala nabi. Ya ayuhal ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima. Allah himself, this is the one action we can do that Allah himself is doing, which is he's sending blessings and, and, and peace upon the Messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so we are asking Allah to also send His blessings and peace to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the last story of tolerance was just an example of somebody who was urinating in the masjid, a Bedouin, somebody who wasn't from the community. And so, for example, if we see somebody who comes and starts urinating in the masjid, we wouldn't be very happy and maybe that person would get jumped. And that's exactly what was about to happen at the time with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he stopped his Sahaba, and not only he stopped them, he said, let him finish. Let him finish his job. And he kindly took him to the side and explained to him that this is not how we, this is the place of prayer, it is not the place, this is not a bathroom, basically. And I believe this was the story when that man said, oh Allah have mercy on me and Muhammad and nobody else. And the Prophet said, why are you restricting something that's so vast? His mercy, Allah's mercy can encompass all of us. There's enough space in Jannah for everybody. إن الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد الله في نعمه وكافي ومزيده اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم قال الله تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحبكم الله ويوفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم say if you love Allah then follow me meaning the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم if you follow me, just by following the Messenger of Allah, Allah will love you and forgive you your sins. So we need to inculcate the love for the Messenger of Allah وسلم, into our lives. How do we do that? It's not like we live with him and seeing his miracles day and night. The Sahaba used to live with him, they would see his miracles, they would see his smile. SubhanAllah, they were praying Fajr with Abu Bakr anhu, and the Prophet was sick, he was dying, he pulled his curtains away, he smiled, his face was so bright, they loved him so much, it was on the side. But that smile was enough to distract everybody from the salah. And they're all looking, oh, the Messenger of God is looking at us and smiling and so happy to see his ummah praying. Sallallahu alayhi wa They were so overjoyed that they were like almost breaking their prayer. And hoping for him to come join the prayer and lead the prayer. And we need to be overflowing. And how can we be? Except we have to read the seerah, we have to study the seerah, we got to talk about the seerah, we got to talk about Prophet we got to be much noon, we got to be crazy. We need to be crazy in a good way, crazy in love. Because what if, when people say, oh, he's mad about her, you know, somebody's crazy about some person, we need to be crazy in the love of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Of course, that doesn't mean we act crazy. We have to act within the, the laws of Islam. And that's why you have to have knowledge also. And if you don't know, then you ask somebody, you find out from your proper sources. So I'll ask Allah Ta'ala to give us tawfiq, to love the Messenger of Allah, so Allah Ta'ala, to love Allah, the Messenger of Allah, and make that love more beloved to us. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم وإياكم الله